the first question I often get that I want to clear up right off the bat is that Universal Analytics is not the same thing as Google Analytics Premium. We'll get into the details of Google Analytics Premium in a future video, but for now I'll summarize by saying that Google Analytics Premium is a paid version of Google Analytics that is offered to enterprises where they need to crunch higher volumes of data, they need very fast processing, higher sampling limits, higher number of custom variables or custom dimensions, contractual performance guarantees, and things along those lines. With a few exceptions, it's the same basic interface and the features of the standard free product, but with more processing horsepower and speed underneath. Just like the standard free version, Google Analytics Premium can run in both the classic version of Google Analytics or the new universal version. So for all practical purposes, they really have nothing to do with each other. By way of analogy, you could think of premium as a two-car garage versus a single-car garage. And universal is the type of car you put inside. So it doesn't matter what type of car you put inside, universal or classic, one just gives you a bit more space to store that car. Okay, so it's not Google Analytics Premium, so what is it then? It's Google's next generation analytics platform, and there's a major shift in the way they collect and store data. Eventually, it will also have a whole suite of reports that take advantage of this new data stack, but for right now, those changes aren't quite as obvious. In fact, in the Essentials version of this course, which we're re-recording right now, those more basic reports aren't really seeing much difference at all, since the use cases of where Universal Analytics really shines is for the more advanced power users. So if we know what it's not, then what is it, and why is it called that? Well, we know people use multiple devices, but right now, that one person appears as different users in analytics when they use those different devices. When that person logs into the site, for example, like you might right here on lynda.com, the site itself knows that you are one person in one account and shows you your history, account status, etc., regardless of what device you're on. But your analytics still doesn't. It treats you as different people because it doesn't understand that you're all one person. Now, with Universal, there's a way for you to tell analytics to override whatever ID might be assigned by Google and instead use this Universal one that you assign on all those different devices. This is known as a user ID override and one of the features that you can take advantage of in Universal Analytics. We'll cover it in more depth in its own movie, but it's something to be thinking about if you have logins or other ways to identify a single person who happens to be on multiple devices. The next thing is that we can now connect offline conversions with online conversions. So oftentimes conversions will start online, but they'll finish offline. For example, let's say you're a car dealership or a phone-based call center, or even a game company who allows in-app purchases. You can now tie the initial visit with what we call a latent conversion that happens later, which is often not on the web. The measurement protocol allows you to send data into Google Analytics directly. In this case, you can add your own data to Google Analytics. In fact, we've seen people do all kinds of things, like have coffee pots where every time a fresh pot is made, it sends the data to Google, or turnstiles at an amusement park where every time someone goes through that turnstile, it sends the data to Google. All kinds of non-web devices that are sending in data to Google. So it's universal in that respect. Google's basically saying, as long as you get it in the format that we need it in, you can send in the data to the account, and we'll take it and process it. So you can have your CRM fire off that data when that offline conversion happens. A feature known as data import is another way to get data into the system. Let's say that you track SKUs via Google Analytics as part of the product and e-commerce suite, but you have internal designations for those products that you want to upload. Or you track which sales region that a particular store location falls under. You can add all kinds of additional data through a feature known as dimension widening that allows you to upload data that supplements and enhances the data that comes naturally through Google Analytics. The only caveat here is you still don't want to add in PII or personally identifiable information, so you can't just upload your entire CRM record. So consult your lawyers, of course, but the rule of thumb is that if a Google employee were to look at your account, they should not be able to determine which individual is being tracked. So no names, no email addresses, social security numbers, any of that kind of stuff. You can also now upload cost data from other advertising sources. So if you want to track how much you spend on those Bing ads, you can now do that just like you could from your AdWords spend. One thing is you won't want to use this to upload your AdWords data. Continue to use auto-tagging, and it will pull that in from the back-end database from AdWords automatically. Another thing that's universal is the code base. Before, we had a few different JavaScript versions that could all be considered production to some extent. You had the really old urchin.js, which, believe it or not, was still valid. The ga.js synchronous version. We had the ga.js asynchronous version. And the dc.js that enabled the remarketing and audience reports. Now there's going to be one code base. It is analytics.js, and as of the coming out of beta here, it now supports remarketing and all those other functions as well, so it truly is one universal code base. 
There's also a universal cookie. We used to have all kinds of different cookies that controlled how Google Analytics behaved. If you wanted to modify, for example, the session timeouts, you'd have to change the JavaScript to include special code that would modify those cookie timeouts. Now all that stuff is taken care of via settings in your account configuration, so you don't have to change the code, which is always a good thing. Session timeouts, campaigns, deciding which sites should be excluded from appearing as referrers, sometimes known as self-refers, all those things are going to be taken care of in the account itself. And we'll take a closer look at those things in the next video where we actually perform the upgrade, but they're a nice byproduct of this simplified cookie. Okay, so the big question is, should you pull the trigger and upgrade? Now, as a consultant, I'm sworn by oath to providing answers like, well, it depends. Okay, I'll budge a little bit and say that for most users, yes. This is now the primary code base, and it is Google's goal to have 100% adoption as fast as they can make it happen, as it's very expensive for them to maintain these two different processing pipelines. So to that end, they're going to be deprecating older code bases, so eventually you'll be facing forced upgrades. Don't expect that to happen for a little while, but sooner or later, it's, it's going to happen. But a bigger thing you might think about is that the new features, they're really only going to be developed for this new code that is the new standard. If you want to take advantage of those cool things we've just talked about earlier and some of the new things that are going to come, they're very likely only going to be targeted for universal analytics. But for some of you, it will be much easier than others. If you have an advanced installation with custom variables, e-commerce, events, those kinds of things, you are looking at a fair amount of retagging as the syntax is going to change for all the things that you see here on the screen. Hopefully, I've given you enough to understand what universal analytics is, what it's not, and whether you should ponder an upgrade. In the next video, I'll show you how to pull the trigger should you decide to do so.